Hi everyone, it's Lauren and welcome back to my series on how to start a booktube channel. I have done loads of videos in this series, taking you right through from the very beginnings, from even thinking about what videos you're going to film, and I'm going to take you all the way through the process to uploading and getting involved in whichever YouTube community you want to get involved in. Today we're going to be looking at uploading your video to YouTube and using the YouTube interface. So if you are already uploading videos, if you are a fairly new booktuber or YouTuber, then you will have seen all of this before and you'll probably using it already but if you are somebody who hasn't started their YouTube channel yet or at least hasn't uploaded a video to their channel yet then some of this might be new to you so all we're going to be doing today is a quick walkthrough of what I do when I upload a video to YouTube so there are more in-depth videos and tutorials that YouTube do to tell you how to use the dashboard and all the analytics and different things that they have on there but this is just a very basic how-to just a couple of things before we get started the website that I use to make my thumbnails is pickmonkey.com so in this walkthrough I will show you how I create my thumbnails until very very recently pickmonkey was free and now you have to pay for it unfortunately they've just changed their terms of service so I'm really sorry I was already paying to use it I had the royale premium feature so for me I will just continue to use it because my subscription hasn't changed but if you are just starting to use YouTube and you want to find a different free website to make your thumbnails then I'm really sorry I'm, I'm showing you something that's not that helpful but it will at least give you an idea of how to make a thumbnail kind of in general and some different options that are available to you. The other thing I wanted to mention briefly was subtitling your videos. I always try to put closed captions on my videos and I find it very very easy and quick to do. When you upload a video to YouTube, YouTube will auto-generate some subtitles based on what it thinks that you're saying and I found recently that those are normally excellent, like really, really good, and it takes me about 10 minutes just to scroll through and correct some grammar and correct some words that YouTube hasn't picked up properly. When I first started subtitling my videos, I found the auto-generated subtitles not very good at all, and I found that I had to correct them a lot. So I don't know whether the software from YouTube has changed in general, or whether because I've been subtitling my videos for about, I don't know, six months to a year now, that it's now got used to my voice. I I couldn't tell you, but recently I found that it's very quick and it only takes me about 10 minutes. There are other ways to subtitle your videos as well. If you shoot videos from a script, you can then upload that transcript to YouTube and it will automatically work out the timings for what you've written and what you're saying. You can also type along to your video um, once it's uploaded. So there's lots of different ways to do it. It just depends on what's easiest for you. But I really would recommend trying to get into the habit of putting up closed captions as early as possible, as soon into your YouTube journey as you possibly can because it really doesn't take that long and if you're in the habit of doing it um, then it becomes second nature and really easy and it's so important in terms of making your videos accessible to people who have hearing difficulties and also to people who don't speak the same language as you or if they speak in your language not as a first language then it helps them to follow if you speak very fast like I do or if you use some colloquialisms or stumble over your words it just helps people to follow what you're saying if they're struggling. Okay, let's get uploading. It's really easy to upload a YouTube video. I will just give you a whistle stop tour through what I do. So you basically click on this little button here, um, which will take you to the upload screen. I always upload my files as private to begin with um, because you don't want it to go into people's subscription boxes straight away. Um, what we're going to do is upload the book haul uh, video that I was editing in the previous video in this series so I'll just find where I've saved that and it should start uploading and um, hopefully this won't take too long but it can take quite a long time to upload like, like I'm talking overnight and um, it can take absolute hours depending on your internet connection I've got quite fast internet um, upload so it shouldn't take too long and this video isn't very long itself so hopefully it won't take too long but the first thing that you see is this um, little screen which allows you to edit the title um, you can add it to a playlist that you have you can put in some tags um, and you can edit the description box there's more things you can do to edit the video once it's actually uploaded to YouTube but these are just kind of the overview things that you can do so you can see that as soon as I've clicked upload I already have some tags in here and I already have some stuff in the description because I have put this as an upload default. See, these are some things I always have. Um, so for example, I always have my link to my Shakespeare playlist because it's just easier for me to have this automatically and delete it for videos that it's not relevant for than it is to 
um, add it in every time I upload a video on Shakespeare. So just little things like that, which can make your life easier. Um, so I can put a little description in here. These tags are what people search. This helps YouTube understand what your video is about um, a little bit easier. And as well as the title, they go into the metadata. So when people are searching for videos, um, if they search for any of these terms, hopefully your video will come up. So I've got some standard things that I put in that I think people might be searching. I don't really know. And because this is a book haul, I'm going to put in some more phrases. Um, the only thing you can have as a standard upload is an individual word, but you can put in this box um, phrases as well. So I usually put um, like reads and daydreams in, I put in book haul, I put in like some names of the authors that are in the in the video, just some sort of things that I think people might search and who, if they're searching for these terms, they might find my video interesting. I also have some playlists on my channel which help to group similar videos together. So I'm going to add this to my latest videos, which comes at the top of my channel, and I'm going to add it to book hauls as well, just in case somebody wants to watch a load of book hauls, which some people might want to do. The other thing that you can do on this screen is add in a thumbnail. So YouTube does automatically take stills of your video once it's uploaded and once it's processed, but most people want to make their own thumbnails. So you can add it here. So while this is uploading, I'll show you the website I use to make my thumbnail. So what I do is go to pickmonkey.com. Again, like I just found this watching um, other videos about how to make a YouTube thumbnail. There'll be loads of loads more advice um, on these videos, but this is just kind of a, a snapshot of what I do. So you can create your own um, canvas on here, but I normally start with an uploaded picture, which is a still from my uh, video. So this is the one I'm going to choose today. Cool. So what I do, <laughs> your goofy grin, what I normally do when I'm making my um, YouTube videos is just kind of blur out the background a little, a little bit because my bedroom background is slightly busy um, and I want people to be able to see uh, me standing out and I want to be able to see the words that I put on my thumbnail. Everybody like does this slightly differently. There is no right way of doing this and you can play around it's actually pretty good on PicMonkey. They've got lots of different themes and different uh, style of fonts that you can put on your pictures you can upload your own overlays to put into the picture or you can use some of the stuff that they have already on here they actually have quite a lot of different things um so it's pretty good and they always have like funny little themes so it's actually quite a useful um website i would really recommend it i always do something very very simple in my videos and what i do is i just take a rectangle and i make it white I fade it so you can see a little bit of the background and then basically I erase the shape around myself and that's <laughs> this is how I blur my background <laughs> it's not very high tech uh, but this is what I do like like I said there's there's lots of people do different things some people put words in their thumbnail some people don't some people literally just um put up a picture of themselves and have the title of the video tell you what it's about. I find it's useful to put um, some words in the thumbnail as well as the title of the video because it just helps people see when they're scrolling through their subscription box. They can kind of really see what your video is about. So I'm going to very quickly do this. And then all I do is add some text over the top. So I'm just going to put book haul or something, I suppose. I haven't really thought what I'm going to write. Um, it's, it's so so straightforward and it's a really easy website to use because it'll help you um to help you develop your own style as well because there's so many different things that you can do down here okay super simple um or something i would always recommend doing when you're doing your um thumbnails is to have a look at them very small because this is a really good screen for looking at the detail of a picture but when someone is scrolling through on youtube they only see them about this size so you want to make sure that your um if you've got any writing on your thumbnail that it's legible and people can read it i think sometimes i do prefer quite thin font and then sometimes i do feel like my writing isn't that visible I don't know but that's kind of the style that I like so I just try and make sure that people can see it and I think people can with this uh so that's great and I'll export that and then upload it onto my video so I've done that my video is uploaded um and it's finished processing so now we can go to uh the video manager but you can see here that YouTube has found some thumbnails for me now so let's go to video manager and you can see uh what else we can do So first things first, I'm going to upload my thumbnail. I'm going to change the title here. You don't have to be uh, set on a title before you upload the video because you can change the title once it's uploaded. 
Um, other things that you can do on here, um, you can add music and you can do enhancements of the actual picture. I've never actually used these bits. But what I do do is use the end screen feature, um, which is actually really, they've updated this. So it's really easy now that you can just put the same kind of end screen format that you use on another video. Uh, so what I do is I have a little subscribe button, which appears down here. Um, and then when my end screen turns up, it has a video which is recommended for the viewer. You can choose what video comes here. You can say my, my most recent video, or you can do one that's recommended depending on the person who's watching. So there's loads of different things you can do here. And I'm sure you've seen other people do it very differently. Something else that I do use sometimes is cards. If I want to recommend a different video, this is when um, something turns up um, in the top corner up here, like when you link a video, um, this is on cards and you literally just scroll through the video um, and add a card if you want to put a link in there. And then the other thing that I do always do is do subtitles. So this kind of takes some time to generate. YouTube will auto-generate subtitles once your video has been uploaded for an hour or two um, because it just goes through and it's just very clever. And I do find that the auto-generated captions are actually quite good. I do stumble over my words sometimes and it doesn't pick up everything that I say, but generally it's pretty accurate. So what I normally do is just edit the auto-generated ones. So that's it really. The only other thing that I sometimes do is schedule my videos. So you can I can either make it go public now if I want, I can make it unlisted, which would mean that it does exist on YouTube, but on, only people who have a link to it can view it. Um, or I can schedule it to go live at a certain time, which is what I normally do, to be honest. So that's the only thing left to do, really. And if I want to add any more details to the description box, which I probably do, I normally put links to the books that I mention in here. Um, but apart from that, the dashboard is quite good on YouTube. You can look at your uh, comments that you've got across all of your different videos, which is quite handy. Um, you can look at the analytics of the different videos, like how many views you get, but also kind of where they come from, like who's watching your videos, where they get the videos from. It's, it's really interesting. Um, not that I'm amazing at analytics, <laughs> um, but the information is there on all of your engagement and stuff if you want to look into it. This is also where you get YouTube music from. If you go onto the little create page, um, you've got the audio library, which has all of the standard YouTube music that everybody knows so well. And this is pretty good to use because all of this uh, music is copyright free or you have to put something in your description box saying where it came from and who did it. But this is quite a hassle free way of using music for your videos, because if you find other music, often it can have ad restrictions. So your video might not be monetized or there could be copyright issues. It is a bit of a minefield putting music on music <laughs> on a YouTube video. And um, so this is quite a handy resource, although it's quite clunky and difficult to find music that you want here you know it, it is there it does all exist and that is really it there's nothing else to it the website is very easy to use there are tutorials that exist which will go into much more detail than this if you want to learn like more specific things about how to use the youtube upload dashboard but really the only thing now is for this to go live or be scheduled and we're done and you can just wait for the views to come <laughs> rolling in there we go so I hope that that was useful or at least a bit interesting for you to see the behind the scenes of how I upload my videos. If you have any other tips that you've found while you've been uploading your videos, then please leave them in the comments below for other people to find. I'd love to have this be a bit of a resource for everybody. My next video in this series and the last video in this series, in fact, is going to be all about engaging with YouTube communities, getting your video scenes and doing the promotion for your videos. Um, so I hope that you're looking forward to that and I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.